Good morning, 352. We're so glad that you're tuning in this morning. If any of you are there from 360 or 354, welcome. I hope that we're able to share something with you today that would be very helpful with you and your family. We're going to, I'm going to, uh, Dylan and I, Dylan is a future recruit, the United States Army. Uh, we're working on recruiting him as it is. And so this morning we're going to do some worship. We're going to sing. And so you please sing along with us too. If you want to Google it, the song is Forever by Chris Tomlin. You can Google it and look at the lyrics there on your computer and sing along with us. Ready? Okay. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Stretched arm, his love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, his love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever, God. of God we will carry on his love endures forever sing praise sing praise sing praise sing praise forever God is faithful forever God is strong forever God is with us forever. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is with us forever. Forever. Thanks again for being with us this morning. Go ahead and turn to Joshua chapter 10. And as you know, we've been making our way through the book of Joshua uh, because we kind of talked out of the Battle of Jericho uh, way out of order. We also talked about the battle at Ai. Uh, I'm skipping over that and on to chapter 10 so that we can pick up right there. And again, I want to deal really with the leadership of, of how we, uh, as, as people of God, as soldiers, uh, lead other people and how how we want to ensure that the example we, pri we provide before them is something that, that would be right for them to follow. And so, again, I want to talk to you from the perspective of Joshua, just as we have for several weeks. Joshua chapter 10 again. Uh, go ahead and be turning there in your Bibles. And as you turn to those, I'm going to go ahead and pray. God, we praise you again for this morning. We thank you for the opportunity. God, look at your word and for what you say to us there. We thank you for your provision. In Jesus' name, amen. So this morning, I want to talk to you about how God is our help, he, and, he, and he always is our help. I don't know if you've read before Psalm chapter 91, but I would encourage you to do that at some point, especially if you're having a down day, one of those days when nothing is going right, or even a day when you're especially afraid of something that, that's going on in your life where you have to bear quite a bit of courage. Turn to Psalm chapter 91, and maybe we'll do that one day before the end of uh, uh, our, our time of being closed into our homes. Maybe we'll go through Psalm 91 one day just so we can talk a little bit about that. But go and read that one day when you're having those types of feelings. But again, we're going to talk from Joshua chapter 10 today, and I want to talk to you about the provision of God. And let me kind of catch you up to what's happening here. So the men of Gibeon have sent to Joshua and the people of God to come and enter into this battle. 
And I want to pick up there at verse number 8 and what God says to Joshua and how God tells Joshua to lead in this moment. Look at what he says in verse number 10. And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not fear them, for I have delivered them into your hand. Not a man of them shall stand before you. So you know how we say best line up front bluff in the military so often. We want to know very quickly what it is that you want to talk about so that, that we're not beating, beating around the bush. And that's exactly what God does with Joshua here. He says, Joshua, don't worry. This is what's going to happen. I, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to be your help in this moment. And it goes on verse number nine. Joshua therefore came upon them suddenly, having marched all night from Gilgal. So the Lord routed them before Israel, killed them with a great slaughter at Gibeon, chased them along the roads that goes to Beth, Horan, and struck them down as far as Azekah and Makeda. Now those words are very hard. They always been, have been hard for me to pronounce. I'm sure some of them are hard for you to pronounce as well. And it happened as they fled before Israel and were in the descent of Beth Horon that the Lord cast down large hailstones from heaven on them as far as Azekah. So, so now Joshua has been fighting with these people. They've walked all night long. They've marched in order to get to this place of the battle. And now the battle's taking place and, and the people in which they're fighting against have begun to flee. They're running from the people of God. And so God doing what he has already said that was going to happen there in verse number 8, I'm going to be with you. So God is, 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 is forcing down hailstones upon the enemies of God's people. So, so God has come to their aid. Verse number 12, Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Sun stand still over Gibeon, and moon in the valley of, of Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the people had revenge upon their enemies. Look at verse number 13. Is this not written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and did not hasten to go down for about the whole day. And so God causes the sun to literally stand still in the sky so it doesn't get dark so that the battle can continue and so that the, his people and his leader of those people, Joshua, could lead these people and they could totally win this battle that's happening. So the sun is literally standing still in the sky. What an amazing story. But it talks, it tells me about the power of God, the might of God. See, the author of all creation is the same God that we talk to when we pray. The one who said in the beginning, when he said, let there be light, and there was light just like he said. When he said, let there be stars in the sky, and the stars appeared because of his voice, he said to let that happen. That same God that did all that creation is the same God that Joshua is following right here. And so Joshua does not have to lead on his own merit. He does not have to lead in and of himself because he is falling on God and allowing God to work through him so that he can lead in a manner that would be pleasing to, to God himself. And so now God has come to Joshua's aid. There he is. So has there ever been a time in your life when you have needed the aid of God? And, and I would ask you this question. How did you go about asking for God to aid you in that situation? Maybe that time is right now. Maybe you're watching today because you just came looking and hoping something would be said that would bring you hope. And, and I want to just say to you, if that's you this morning, that our God is a God of hope. He's not only a God of hope, but he's a God of deliverance. And he wants to hear from you. I would just urge you to, to pray, to spend time with God. And, and, and as you pray, would you just mention to God his holiness, about his power and his might, about how uh, God loves you so much, before you even get into asking him to help you with, every, whatever, with whatever situation that you find yourself in right now. But just, if you would, just spend some time in worship of who God is. And also, before you get into that place where you begin to mention to God the situation that you find yourself in, would you just get all the mess that you've allowed to go on in your life? For example, Maybe there's some things that you've said in the last few days that God's reminding your heart of right now. Maybe there's some things that you've thought or, or some things you've allowed yourself to look at in the last few days that God is just reminding you of right now and saying, you know, you shouldn't have done that. But the wonderful thing about our God is, is He's a God of forgiveness. 
Would you just go to God right now with those things that He's placed on your heart and say to Him, God, I need your forgiveness. I confess my sin. And don't just say, uh, God, forgive me. I know that I'm a sinner. Don't just say that. Would you just say to God exactly what, what it is that you've done, whatever way that you've trespassed against God, would you just mention that to Him right now? And then after you've done that, would you then go to God with the need that you have in your life? Because our God is a forgiving God. He's one of mercy. And not only that, but He's one who gives provision in times of need. You know, there's been times in my life when it's come right down to the very last minute. When I just didn't know when the help was going to come. Times when, when I was a private in the military, a PFC at Fort Bragg and had two children and just didn't know how in the world that my wife and, and our children were going to make it. And then in that moment, God just provided. And then it was that very last moment when I just didn't think there was any hope. But there's always hope with God. There's always hope with God. And so the thing that I find here when I look at Joshua is, 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 is God is Joshua's help. And he's his ever-present help. And not only that, but he's his hope. So when Joshua has a need, then do you think that he just keeps it stored inside? No. Joshua goes straight to the maker of the universe and says, God, I need help. You see, I don't believe that Joshua actually knew how he was going to go about this until God said, do it this way. And all he had to do was just do it God's way. And God came in and delivered. But I want to say to you this morning that our God is a God of blessings. He's a God of hope. He's a God of love. And he's a God who desires to help you right now in your time of need. So I would encourage you, just like people did in the Word of God, they went to God and God delivered. And, and he delivered to such an extent right here that he made the sun to stand still in the sky. Wow. That's the kind of God that we serve. Let me just encourage you too by saying there were many other examples in the Word of God. In Daniel chapter 3, there were those three men who were thrown into a furnace of fire. And it was thought when the king Nebuchadnezzar looked over into that furnace that those three men would be consumed by that fire, but they weren't. And the reason that, that they were not was because, because God himself was there to deliver them out of that furnace. The Bible says that not even a hair on, not even a hair on their body was even singed. They didn't even smell like smoke when they came out of that fire. That's, that's how awesome our God is. So can I encourage you this morning? If you're in that time of need, would you just go to the God of the universe? And would you just pray and ask for his help? And I want to encourage you to do something else this morning as well. Maybe you would like me to pray with you. Maybe there's something that I can do to be a help to you during this time, whether it's counsel, whether it's just some, some words of encouragement that you need to be spoken into you right now. And maybe I can do that through the Word of God. Would you contact me through email? I'd love to do that. And here's what I'll do. If you'll contact me through email and, and just say, uh, Chaplain Stellan, I need this, this kind of help then here's what I will do. I will call you by phone. Please give me your phone number so that I can make that phone call so that we can link up and have a conversation about the need that you have in your life right now. Even if you're in, in 360th Brigade or you're in 354 Brigade, same thing goes. Just let me know what brigade that, that you're in so I'll know how to push that information along to your chaplain so that you can get the help that you need in this moment right now. Would you let me pray with you? God, I praise you for this morning. I thank you for the opportunity we've had to study your word. And God, for how you gave us this wonderful example of the power of your mind, about how you can do things that we never would consider would even be possible, like causing the sun to stand still in the sky. God, I, I know that you are a God who's rich in power and mercy and love. And God, I thank you for that. Bless us now as we spend the rest of our day just thinking about the, the mercy that we find through God and the love. And the kindness. Lord, we thank you for your love. In Jesus' name.